a physics. Um, the CATL cells, or the CATL situation will be more of, um, and that's so. So that it's it's not just it's, it's not super. Easy to replace with these things. Mm. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we'll be. We do expect to use CATL. We do expect to use LG. Currently, we use using Panasonic. When I say expect to use, I mean like virtually a matter of months. So by the middle of this year, we probably be using both LG and CATL um, in, in volume. Wow. So we were talking about a lot of Tesla stuff, but we kind of wanted to ask you about your personal history because we were saying, you were saying how there's some misconceptions you would like to make straight. I mean, you know, Ashley Vance wrote a book about you. I just read oh, May's lovely sure. book and it was really wonderful. I loved it and learned a little bit more history about your family and you. But um, what are some of the misconceptions that you would like to correct? You know, most of this is just, it ended up being kind of water under the bridge that people didn't notice that much. Hmm. Um, you know, I mean, there's a sort of, so some stories in there where it, it sounds like I like fired people all of a sudden and arbitrarily, which was not the case. Uh, there, um, you know, the, the, it just actually asked somebody who, uh, who who didn't know what was going on, and then that person was suddenly not there, and they didn't know why. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I, you know, I definitely do not fire talented people, and yeah, you know, unless there's no option. So. Yeah. Um, and and so not, not, not without warning. Or... Well, I keep hearing you say we. Like, it sounds like you're always thinking of everybody. You're, I, I see you as a very selfless person in your oh, endeavors. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously. I mean, yeah. It's like from the age of 12, it sounds like you've been thinking about how to help humanity. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not trying to be sort of like some, you know, the, the sort of savior or something like that, you know. But it's, it's really just that... Uh, if, if it just seems like the, it just I don't know. Seems like the obvious thing to do. I, I can't like I'm not sure why you do anything else. Um, you, you, you we, we want to maximize happiness of the population and propagate into the future as far as possible and understand the nature of reality. Um, and from that, I think everything else follows. Um, I saw you on Twitter, um, like talking about how, like people are having this rumor that you've been wealthy your whole life, and that would be like the only reason you became successful. And you've debunked that. And can you like share more about your upbringing and what led you to going to <laughs> North America uh, when you? Sure. But yeah, I just uh, left South Africa um, um, when I was seventeen, and. Land in Montreal. I had like I don't know about two thousand dollars Canadian. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I started just staying in a youth hostel for a few days, and then the, there was this, you could buy a ticket to go across the country for a hundred bucks uh, and stop along the way. And so um, I did put that and uh, just took a like, greyhound across Canada and saw all these like little towns. Well, we were getting. <laughs> yes. I didn't have much. I had like a backpack, like and a suitcase, books. But the 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 the, the bus company Greyhound they unloaded it uh, in one of the cities, and then the bus left without my my stuff. Oh, that's nice. So I literally had nothing. All your books. But your clothes too. Um, actually, weirdly, I think I might have had the books thing, but no. <laughs> My clothes. That was priorities. All you needed. Yeah, because I needed. I was just sitting in the bus station, reading, waiting for the bus to get ready. Yeah. Um, and I think I had the books, but not, not, no, but no clothing. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, um, but I, I managed to get to Swift Car in Saskatchewan, um, and then my, that, my, it, it's your cousin, cousin's son. Cousin's son, yeah, has a wheat farm there, and I worked on the wheat farm for about six weeks. Wow. Um, and turned, so I turned 18 in Saskatchewan. Um, it, it's a town called Swift Current. 
So that was summertime, right? It was June. Yeah. Yeah, yeah June 28th. So, because I've been there in the winter and it's like minus 40. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be traveling. Yeah. Did you ice skate? Did you try ice skating? No, it was it was quite warm. Okay. Yeah, oh, well, time. I mean, in the winter. Did you stay for the winter? <laughs> Were you there in the winter? No, I was just there, I was there for about six weeks. Oh, you're lucky. You survived. That's good. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it was cold there. Literally work, working on the wheat farm, um, did a barn raising and cleared out the wheat bins, you know, the grain bed, grain silos, that kind of thing. And um, I just worked the vegetable patch, basically just doing various things. Was your mind just thinking of what you're what you're going to do after that? Yeah, it's perfect. What, what, what do I do next? Uh, I don't know what to do. Um, so then, then I ended up getting back on the bus and went to Vancouver. Mm. And I had a, a half uncle there um, who was kind of in the lumber industry. Um, he, like made lumber like lumber equipment. Sounds like the Northwest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. So I ended up chainsawing logs and working on uh, the slumber mill um, and uh, cleaning out the, the, the where, they, where they boil the pulp and just like mm. cra- crazy sort of boiler rooms. Yeah. Uh, wow. And that, that might be the hottest job I've had actually because you have to like crawl through this little tunnel um, in a hazmat suit and then. Uh, with with uh, uh, shovel with, with and, and then shovel this sort of steaming sand and and, and mulch out of the <laughs> the boilers to clean them out. Um, wow! And, and you have to like there was only one entrance or exit, which is like this little little tunnel. If you're claustrophobic, you could be real real bad. And and then you could you know, shovel the. The, the sand and the mulch through the tunnel, uh, and it would actually block the tunnel, and then somebody else would reach in and shovel it out from the other side. So just big enough, long enough that if you have a shovel with a long handle, the, so, so one person on the inside can shovel it far enough that the, someone on the outside can shovel it out. Wow. And then you have to rotate every 15 minutes to avoid getting hypothermia. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and there's no safety, so it's just a man looking out for you. <laughs> there's just two people kind of paired up, so if like one person collapses and you're going to call somebody. <sighs> but it'd be really hard to drag somebody out, I have to say. It's, it's not team safe, because if the tunnel gets blocked, trying to get the tunnel, trying to block that tunnel would be very difficult in a short period of time. Mm-hmm. So, um, But it was the highest paying job at the, the, at the employment office. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I was like, okay, the other jobs were like, I don't know, $8 an hour, and this one was $18 an hour. They'd buy your clothes, and they're all gone. <laughs> well, they, gave, they did give you a hazmat suit. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. How long did you have to, did you do that job for? Uh, like four days. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was, it was, then it was done. Yeah. It was, awesome. it was, just, it was like a short-term thing, cleaning green bins, like cleaning the, the, yeah, the boiler rooms. Mm-hmm. So what was next? We were in boiler rooms, and then... Yeah, so it was pretty risky. Um, yeah, I, I mean, literally, it was like a lumberjack who's chainsawing uh, logs um, and uh, just doing lumbery, lumber stuff, basically, um, for a few months there. And then applied for college and you know, went to uh, Queen's University in um, Kingston um, and uh, was there for a couple of years and then. Uh, Somebody that's just I should apply to UPenn, and uh, I I didn't think I'd be able to go because I I I paid pay for my own way through university, just which is actually not that hard in Canada because the the tuition system uh, yeah the tuition is highly subsidized in Canada so um, so with you know with basically some if you, if you just sort of work during the, the summer and semester and take out some loans and some, get some scholarships you can pretty much go to any college in Canada I think. But I met someone who was at UPenn, and, and they said you should at least apply. And I applied, and they, they actually gave me like quite a big scholarship, so uh, that, that allowed me to go there. And so I did the physics and economics um, there, and, uh, and and then that that's what led to the road trip to Stanford with uh, Robin Wren, um, and, uh, and 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 then I, that was during that. That summer, that I was, was like, okay, I, I can either spend several years kind of doing a PhD in, or not that I care about the PhD actually, but I just need a lab. Um, but I, I could either spend a bunch of years working in a lab, um, and maybe it would 
maybe the technology would pan out or maybe it wouldn't. Um, but the internet would, would was definitely about to go supernova in 95. So I was like, okay, look, I, I can always come back to working on electric cars, basically, um, and which of course I did. <laughs> um, but the internet is not going to wait. So, I was, uh, so then I put um, Sanford on deferment and um, started Zip2, which was really just, uh, you know, started off with maps and directions, yellow pages, white pages, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, it was, uh, for, for, that's my knowledge, the first maps and directions on the internet. So, uh, and there's still some like patents I have. Uh, well, I don't have many more, but like, they've obviously lapsed at this point. But um, for maps and directions and Yelp pages and advertising and stuff. And I, I wrote the whole the whole initial code base I wrote personally, because was, there wasn't anywhere else. It was just me. So, um, and I only had a few thousand dollars. And my brother joined and he brought like $5,000, which was a lot. Yeah, at least for the first few months, there was literally only one computer. So the website, when the website wasn't working, it was because I was compiling code. <laughs> <laughs> and and, um, and even to get an internet connection was pretty hard. But there was an internet service provider on the floor below us. We were more or less squatted in this office. <laughs> the landlord was, was like out of the country or something, and nobody was using it. <laughs> so, so you lived in there? Yeah. I think I read that in May's book, you showered at the YMCA then, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's smart, though. I mean, you, you were thrifty. You did what you had to do. We just, like, had no no money, <laughs> so what I can do. Yeah. What did people think about Zip2 generally? Was it, like, seen as a crazy idea, or, like, did people even understand the Internet back then? Most people did not understand the Internet. Most people didn't know. But even on Sand Hill Road, like, we tried pitching people to invest in an internet company, most of the VCs we pitched to had never used the internet. Do you remember some of the VC firms you went to on Sand Hill? Um, I remember it's, most of the time we wouldn't take a meeting, and if they did take a meeting, they were pretty bored and not. Uh, <laughs> so, like, who's, who's made money on the internet? No, we're like, no one, okay. <laughs> um, but but the, the sea change occurred when um, Netscape went public. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, but the first thing I, I tried to do was not start a company. I tried to get a job at Netscape, but they didn't reply to me. Oh no! Oh man! So I just and I tried and then I tried hanging out in the lobby at Netscape. <laughs> I don't know who to talk to. I was, I was really too shy to talk to anyone. I don't know. So it's like okay, I can't get a job at the only internet company that you know that that, that does internet software. So then I try writing software. Um, so that's. Um, Kind of what, kind of what happened there. Yeah, and then my, like I said, my brother came down and joined. This is like, well, like late 95. Um, and then in January 95, I think it was, the, um, uh, there was there was a lot more interest in the internet stuff following this, the Netscape IPO. Um, and less, the software, software was more impressive, I guess. So then we, then more, more David Allen invested. Um, so their VC firm on Sand Hill Road. Um, and they, they invested, I think it was like $3 million for effectively 60% of the company. Wow. Um, which we thought was crazy. Uh, they're like, well, these people, they're going to give us some money for nothing. <laughs> 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 they must be mad. <laughs> yeah, so they, they, that, this, this seems like crap.